One of the things I had touched on previously, but we were running out of time, so I kind of skipped, is um, you know we talked about how we survived the earthquakes and the fires and the floods and the riots and the fires again and the fires again and the pandemic. Um, but one of the things that I have always found kind of heartwarming are the people that came to join our team, whether they be vendors or reps, when I didn't know, like, why are they coming to work with us and why are they hiring us? And they took a lot of risk. Um, you know, in particular, somebody like Patrick in 86 when all of our lines were really shitty. Like, why? I don't know. But he did. Um, but we also had some vendors, and one in particular that changed the trajectory of our company. So I could tell the story, or he can tell the story, but I'd like Bob Harris to come up, because Bob Harris literally changed the trajectory of sales producers, and I'm grateful that he's here. Would you mind coming up? So, you want me to? Uh, so this is going to be like a husband and wife, because I'm going to tell my side, and then he's going to go, no, that's not how it was. This is my side, right? Yeah, Do you want me to start? Your side. Go okay. Ahead. So Bob was the sales manager of Pop Shots, which at the time was just this, the, yeah, the three-dimension, three-dimension. <laughs> but they were the first company that did it, and we wanted that line really bad. And he's a good poker player, so you can't tell by looking at him, so we're interviewing, and he and Carol, both smoking. <laughs> Walk in the convention center. Carol and I walking the convention center, smoking cigarette after cigarette. Carol making these promises to me about the world is going to change if I just go with sales producers. And at that point in time, my number one rep group in the country was my Southern California rep group. So it was a, it was a tall order for me to consider it. And I think, I think the fact that they both smoked was a help. It was great. It was great. <laughs> um, and the two of them, every day at the show, were like, shh, 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 smoking. And then one day, after the convention center, he came to the showroom. And Carol, being brilliant, and I give her credit where credit is due, they're walking around the showroom, and she turns to Bob, and she goes, so where do you see yourself? Because... It doesn't happen like this anymore. <laughs> and you said... I want the best spot. You said, I want that spot. Yeah, in the window. Which wasn't necessarily the best spot, but he thought it was. So, That's all it takes. <laughs> you vendors, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes and how you make the sausage. Anyway, <laughs> as soon as he said, I want that spot, Carol's like, oh, he's going to hire us. Because you wouldn't have said that. And he hired us. And then the best part of the story, I'll leave for you. No, go when you Me? Yeah, go ahead. So, so his LA rep is the best rep in the country. They had their best show ever. But they're greeting cards. So the best show shouldn't be reorders because your reorders come on the road, right? So you shouldn't have the best show ever. Okay. So he had to fire his rep group and he tells the president of the company, my favorite line from the 80s, I either made the best decision or the worst decision of my career. It was the best. It was the best. In addition, what I want to say, and we've been talking about it as I've walked through some of the tables, is our industry is just so unusual. Because other industries, you don't care deeply about, you work, you work nine to five or whatever your hours are, and then you have your life outside work. But our work and our personal lives are so intertwined. So Bob and I have been friends since, I think it's, we think it's 86. And not only did we do friends, good business neighbors, together, business. friends, neighbors, neighbors, love, hate, good, bad, bumps. No, but that's, that is the epitome of a good relationship, is going through it all. And he's here tonight. It means so much to me. So I want you all to meet him. Love you. When, we would not be here without you. So I'd like to bring up Randy Spohr. So I've known Randy Spore longer than any human being in this room, and pretty much most human beings in my, in my world. And I'll let Randy tell the story, because he has his way, even though sometimes he. I'll be good. So let's go back to 1976, January, the LA gift show. 
my very first gift show as a rep. And the uh, rep principal I work for says, see that lady coming down the aisle? She's one of your customers. I go and introduce myself. Hi, I'm Randy, I'm new rep. She goes like this. Yeah, I don't think so. And she turned around and walked away. <laughs> so I go to the president of the rep group and I, what do I do? He says, go on the other side, do it again. I introduce myself again. She says, okay, fine. Show me something I can't live without. So I showed her pet rock. <laughs> the rest was history. <clears throat> Because Carol said no to the pet rock. And the way she said no, I hope I don't offend anybody. Okay, I won't use the word, I'll use the. She said, I don't need your effing rocks. I can go out of my own backyard and get my own effing rocks. I don't need these effing rocks. And they sent her like six dozen pet rocks. And she sold out like in days. And he said, see, you needed my pet rocks. So that's, that's where I'm interrupting. Go ahead. So. Uh, I would go into the store and I would stand there with my book this thick with all the lines and I don't need anything. Okay. No, I, I don't need anything. Okay. And then she'd take the book and she'd go through the book. And then I hear her many years later as an agency principal telling her reps, don't ever let your customer take the book. So I taught Carol. You done? I'm done. Let me also add that a little bit to the story. So Randy's brother Mitch, his wife Barb is here. We welcome Barb. We've known Barb for decades and worked with Barb, so we're grateful that she's here. So Mitch had a plant and flower store in the same shopping center as Carol's store. And I would like, I, when I was working in the store when I was 10, 12, 13 years old, I liked going over to Mitch's store better. <laughs> so I'd go get lunch and go sit with him. So I knew Mitch and Randy in the 70s before, you know, I even knew I'd ever be in this industry. And when Carol passed away, Randy and Mitch were pallbearers at Carol's funeral. So that's the significance of the relationship. It's really a big deal. And she would be thrilled to know, like somebody said, if Carol were here, I said, if Carol were here, she would tell me all the things I've done wrong. <laughs> if, if Carol was here, she'd be out in the parking lot smoking. That's true, she would be out 100%, 100%. Thank you, Randy. So Randy Eller, if you don't know who Randy Eller is, he's an icon and a legend in our industry. The first time I met Randy, and then I saw him after I'd met him, and he remembered my name, <laughs> I was like, ooh, he remembered me. <laughs> Randy, um, you've done so much for me, but what I, the story I want to tell that was most meaningful to me is um, for any of you who've ever gone through a hard time, whether it's a health crisis or a family situation or whatever, the people who you expect to be with you oftentimes aren't and the people that you never expect show up. This man has my back out of the blue. I don't know what I did to earn it or deserve it, but you make me feel so valued and appreciated. I'm like, very few people have done what you've done and I just really appreciate you. So I want you to come up if there's something you want to say. Love you. Love you. Thank you, and this would be the ultimate definition of mic drop. I just need to drop it and not say another word. <laughs> But um, uh, this lady is very special to me, but so was her mom. And uh, Bob Kirkland and I used to own a company called CBK back in, back in the 80s and 90s, and we had a big space in the LA Mart. And we did quite well there, and that's where I got to know her mom and Bonnie both. And at the, at the, at the bottom line, I was just so impressed with them because I felt like they took the West Coast and their business to such a higher level of being a business than anybody else did. Now, I'm gonna say that after 50 years in this industry, at every level of this industry, there are a lot of people that I refer to as hobbyists. Seriously, they're not that serious about their business. They don't really work at it to improve it and everything else, as Bonnie and her mom did. 
but at the end of the day, I was just so impressed with her professionalism. So Bob and I eventually sold CBK, and at some point, I don't remember what year this was, but at some point, Bonnie called me up and said, Randy, would you come out and do a sales meeting with my rep force? And I said, yes. And then, <laughs> and then, you know, we, we spent a day in our showroom and we talked about things. And I tried to teach her salespeople some things, but then she said, okay, would you ride move with me in the car the next day and let me be with you one-on-one -on -one and meet some of our customers? I said, sure. So now for those of you who have not met me before this evening, just let me say as hard as it is for you to visualize it, I used to be a lar lot larger person than I am today. Okay, so when Bonnie comes to the hotel the next morning and picks me up, I walk outside and I look at her car, which was approximately the size of the left side of my ass. <laughs> and I thought, my God, how am I going to make it through this day? So I get in the car, my knees are in my face, I'm having trouble breathing, but Bonnie takes me all over Southern California. We had a marvelous day in every way. And I've never forgotten that, and I'm as appreciative to you as you are to me. But here's what I'm here to say tonight. I've been in this industry long enough to know that at every level, whether we're talking about vendors, marts, anything else, there are always the standard bearers. There are always the people that at the end of the day, 20 years from now, 40 years from now, forever from now, are gonna be remembered as the people that were the best of class, the people that were the standard bearers for whatever they did in this industry. Bonnie, her mom, and sales producers will always be, they have been for a long time, and they will always be the standard bearers for excellence at the highest level in California and the West Coast. I tell all my clients, please, please. I tell all my clients now that are not with national sales forces, which I will tell you it doesn't really work too well. We'll talk later, okay? I tell all my clients that if you're gonna go with regional reps anywhere in this country, sales producers and Bonnie are at the very top of the list for the West Coast. I salute you. I salute you and your team for the being the best of the best for decades. The best of the best for decades. Wow. Okay, I can just die now. Or I should be retiring or something. Maybe there should be, no. <laughs> Maybe there's an announcement. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to just kind of, oh, Richard's, Richard's coming. I open the door, and, and Richard walks through it. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. I don't know what he's going to say, but... Yeah, well, you're going to love it. Okay. Are we going to talk about our dating? <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, we are, oh, yes. Lord. So, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Richard Freeman. I'm the national... <laughs> very kind. National Sales Director for DM Merchandising. Um, and I have a line that many rep groups across the country want. And I get calls all the time for that line. And when I was making a change in the West, I had walked the mart and done my due diligence, and Bonnie was the person I was most interested in. And this woman said three words to me I'd never heard in my life. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I'm not sure. Okay. I had to date this woman longer than I had to date my wife to get her to take my line on. And she made me jump through who, I, I can't even tell you what I had to do to get sales producers to take my line. I've never begged a rep group in my life. And she played hard to get for how long? Two years. Two years, two years, two years. But it's been an incredible marriage. Um, and of course this year for 2023, they were my rep group of the year. Woohoo! So, we got two awards. We didn't get one, we got two. You got two awards, yes. Um, and Just they saying. Were, <laughs> they were the first December sales meeting, and I had to make them promise not to go out and brag about it until all my meetings were done. But um, no, it's uh, 
Bonnie is not like everyone else, and that is why Sales Producers is not like everyone else, and that's why 40 years later, here they are still standing. So, thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. God, all the love in this room.